This is the IBIS HD5. It's a masher enduro race machine that I've been using for everything from chill trail rides to sending huge drops, and it's been great. But with a ton of upcoming bike park plans, I wanted a bike that was purpose-built for smashing park laps all day, day in, day out. I needed an IBIS downhill bike, but that doesn't currently exist. So I decided to make one. I thought long and hard about what changes to make to the bike that would transform it into the perfect park sled and then got to work. I give you the IBIS HD5DH. And it couldn't have come too soon. One of our favorite bike parks is opening today, so we picked up our co-isolator pals, Carrie and Degju, and made the incredibly ugly drive from Canmore to Golden British Columbia. King Horse Mountain, here we come. All right, let's get these DH tires onto some dirt. We're at a bike park. Oh boy. So we're gonna take the chair up first. Gondola is running for bike spot. Tons of snow up there, which means it's probably gonna be muddy. So we're gonna take the chair lift up, start with a little flow. Make sure the bike's all dialed in, because I have no idea. How's hey. everyone doing today? Oh, pretty good, man. First lap. Yeah, how about you? Oh! Good, I it wasn't me, it's <laughs> Okay. Got a bed in these brakes. Ooh, yeah, I don't have much. So far, so good. It's still a bike. That's been confirmed. A little bit of looseness still. It's kind of like that first layer because not a lot of people have ridden this yet. Hey, oh, bear crap. <laughs> Sick. Whoa, that was great. I can't believe how fast those brakes bedded in. That was crazy. It's like the third turn. Yeah. That was fun. Super berm. So fresh. <laughs> Woo. Lap one. All right. Okay. I'm gonna head over and try a trail called Swamp Donkey. It's like a black diamond jump trail. There were two black bears on that jump. Oh, oh Canada. Yeah. Woo! Whoa! Ah! Check 
go slow. Oh, yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Gotta land on top of that one. Woo! That is so sick. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. speed. This trail is not ridden in yet. There's so much bear poop. Oh, there's more. Nice. Oh man, that's so fun. <sighs> Just a couple bears. <sighs> no big deal. <laughs> I've seen a few bear. Did you see all the bear crap in there? Like yeah. that is where they so hang out. Like, hey, bear. Yeah. <laughs> It is an incredible morning here in Kicking Horse. It's beautiful, the sun is out shining. We had some nice rain overnight, so things will be good and tacky. And I've had a bunch of runs on this bike now. I've got things dialed into, I think, where I like it. So uh, why don't we go, uh, you know, now that it's nice and filthy, why don't we do a little bike check? Now, obviously, the biggest notable thing on this bike is that dual crown fork. And before we get into it, little disclaimer, um, when I showed this project to the folks over at Ibis, one, they said that is freaking rad and uh, the people that actually engineered this frame said two things one it's an incredibly strong frame they think this is super cool and that's awesome but then the second thing they said is we've never actually tested this frame with a dual crown it was never made for a dual crown so if you do choose to put one on the bike it kind of you know sort of voids your warranty so keep that in mind so uh, obviously the biggest thing on this bike is the front fork, the biggest change on the bike anyways. And this is an MRP Bartlett. And so this is their very purpose-built fork that's really supposed to go onto enduro bikes that wanna kind of split park days or if you wanna do a downhill race on your enduro bike. Typically when you buy the Bartlett, you actually size up by about 10 millimeters because they did this cool thing with their fork crown where you can bump up your travel by 10 mil and not actually raise your axle to crown at all on your bike, which is really, really cool. Also on the front is my Michelin DH20 front tire here. Um, I was running Michelin DH2 front and back before this, and I'm really loving the tire. I think having the DH22 front and back is the grippiest possible tire combo in the world ever. Um, but this is bike park we're talking about here. Lots of jump trails. You want your speed to hold. You don't necessarily need a ton of grip because you're not racing. And so I kept the DH22 on the front because I do want maximum grip on the front all the time. And I put a DH34 on the back which from my calculations, they both say that they're 2.4, but I do notice the DH34 to be a little bit narrower, more like a 2.3 and a half kind of thing, which works out great for a rear tire, I think, and it's their fastest rolling downhill tire that they make. So perfect front rear tire combo for downhill riding. The other very big thing on the front of this bike is this enormous 223 millimeter rotor that you probably noticed, and these are from TRP. TRP sent me the brakes and drivetrain for this bike, and so big thanks to them. And so it's a 223 millimeter rotor but it's also 2.3 millimeters in width, whereas a standard rotor is 1.8 millimeters in width. And that may not sound like a big deal, but when you hold one of these in your hands and you see how much stiffer this rotor is, especially for such a big size, it's great. It doesn't warp under major heating. You should never have to worry about bent rotors again. Yes, please. Um, I'm finding that even with the same rotor size setup that I had with my Code RSCs, these definitely have way more power, which is really, really saying something because I've never had more powerful brakes than that code setup. More powerful and they have more modulation through the sort of kind of like the middle of the lever stroke. Uh, it's not such a punch in the face, which is really cool. Moving over to the cockpit. No, I don't have a direct mount stem on there. I wasn't able to get it here in time, but uh, so I have a one up 35 millimeter stem with of course the one up bars. Um, they're not a sponsor of ours, but they did send this stuff for our kits this year. And if there's one handlebar I wanna use at downhill parks, it is this handlebar. It's ovalized, it takes out a lot of the chatter in your hands, which is what I want. That's like the number one thing you want for long park days. So I'm running those. I've got my DMR death grips as always. Moving down the bike, a little bit more one up action is the uh, one up pump that I have had on all of my bikes all the time. It's the best thing ever. I can plug my tires and they've got the tools in there and all that. Um, that's attached over to a Fidlock bottle holder. I don't have the Fidlock bottle on there right now. It's up in the room and I forgot to grab it, but uh, I've got this little baby Fidlock bottle on there, which is perfect for park laps. You, don't, you also don't have to use a communal water tap, which is 
great, especially right now. MRP Hazard Shock, I've got a 500 pound Enduro SL spring on there. This frame doesn't need a progressive uh, spring rate to it, so I've got a linear Enduro SL spring. Pedaling Innovations pedals, which are the best pedals ever for downhill parks. It just takes the load off of that one part of your foot and spreads it out. So you're not, so I don't get calf cramps anymore. My feet don't bounce around anymore. It's amazing. In my mind, there are three things that really make this a downhill bike. Uh, and this is one of those three things. And that is a SDG carbon seat post, solid seat post, no dropper. And this SDG I-Beam saddle. This is their downhill racing saddle. This is one that Aaron Gwynn uses. It's incredible. It's got the cutout on the back to make sure you're not skimming that rear tire on the, on the seat. It's amazing, I love it. And over here we've got the TRP DH7 derailleur, obviously for seven speed specifically. And that has made it up to their yet to be released, but soon to be released seven speed drivetrain, which has been working absolutely flawlessly. I really liked it. The shifter's really nice and crisp, it's great. And of course the fender that's been keeping my videos clear for years now is the Mucky Nuts fender. This is their mud fender short. They also have a long version of this for really crazy muddy days. And last but very not least, zip wheels. It almost feels like you have another 10 mils of travel in my mind. Uh, they're stiff the way they need to be and compliant in the ways they need to be. And so uh, yeah, when you hit rocks, uh, smashing into your rims, Normally you're like, oh, I hope that giant piece of foam in my wheel, wheel is doing its job in protecting the rim, but this rim deforms and moves out of the way on its own. So I don't run inserts in either of my wheels. I hate running inserts. I think it's kind of silly if you ask me. <laughs> and so no inserts, just my DH tires and the zip wheels, and it's perfect. Able to run lower pressures, higher pressures, it doesn't matter with this wheel and tire combo. Okay, so now that you've heard a little bit more about the bike, um, I'm gonna head up, hit things at a little higher speed, crank things up, turn things up a couple notches, and uh, yeah, try and hit some steep tech too. There's so many crazy slippery rock rolls here, and it's a little wet out, but we're gonna have to give it a try. I like that much better than this, honestly. Honestly, let's try out new things. Today. Okay, let's try new things. Nice, yep, yep. No, too much. Feeling it. And I gotta get way under. There we go. Yeah. Each other. Just a little longer. Thanks. Okay. Have a good one. You too. Oh. Normally there's a lot more trails up here, but obviously they had a pretty good year for snow. It seemed like just yesterday I was taking the ski bike down this. Man, these brakes. They're so good. Holy smokes. So we are gonna go and do, oh, Pioneer. Pioneer's a double, whoa, double black trail. Uh, lots of steep rock work and steep loam. Steep, steep, steep. There's one part that I typically walk. <laughs> but other than that, I'm usually good. So I'm curious to see how I'll feel about it when I roll up to it today. Cause that was two years ago, Pioneer. All right, let's do it. So, all GoPro effect, maximum GoPro effect here, guys and girls. So, tires are wet, Let's see how they do. Should be okay. Yeah. Sweet. And what's crazy is, this is a track that they typically do the BC Cup downhill. Whoa. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going. Oh, that looks like a drop. I'm gonna go this way. This doesn't look great either. We're gonna do it. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so the BC Cup, which is really, well, probably the, uh, I'm just gonna stop talking, right? Talk about it later. Anyways, they race this in the rain. And they're crazy, that's all you need to know. Right, here we go. Yeah. Whoa, rocks are slippery today. My tires are a little wet. Woo! Oh man, that suspension. 
Bill, get it. Right. This is it. This is the. Oh! Can I do this? I can do this. I usually walk this. I think the line's this way. There's just, it's probably, it won't look like anything on camera, but there's just like a drop. There's a root drop right there with roots underneath of it. And it's always gotten me. I think I've, I maybe did this one once by accident and then that's been it. We got it, we got it, we got it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I just did it stupid, it's fine. I'll take it. Yeah, that's a steep one. Oh yeah, dead you. Man, he's killing it. Yeah! Whoa! Oh no. He's gone. He has separated from his bicycle. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you did what I did, just with way more speed. Yeah. Oh man. Let me pick the earth out. <laughs> Both of us blew the berm. Get you one day. experiment to this like enduro dh bike experiment i think went off with flying colors it was amazing it was like poppy and yet planted when it needs to needed to be i never had to worry about slashing tires because like the crazy dh tires and everything the brakes were the best brakes i think i've ever used to date so far which is saying something i don't know everything just worked like way better than i expected even yeah Fun times. We are all done here at Kicking Horse. Thanks to Kicking Horse for, for having us here, giving us tickets and a place to stay overnight so we can ride two days. It was awesome. Everyone's over back there. We're gonna head on back to Canmore. And uh, what's gonna be next? I don't even know what's next on the channel. That's the best part about summer. And one last big, huge thank you to TRP and MRP and SDG and all the other three lettered companies out there for helping us out uh, with this build. And of course, Ibis, super grateful. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you next week. Cheers.